Devil's Night, the eve of Halloween, a night when fantasy is reality and the child comes out in all of us, no matter what our age. This Halloween promised to be a real treat for me. I had a date with Mary Ann Davidson, a caring, smart, classy school teacher who understood me like few people did. Hi, Marianne. This is Mike. I'm running a little late, but I hope you'll still keep me after class. See you, Doc. This Halloween turned out to be a festival of real evil. I'd lost a woman I loved to a dangerous, malicious murderer who had to be stopped before he struck again. says she's been dead about two hours. The victim has been strangled. Whoever did this took her by surprise. Check this out. Is that a tattoo? It's a brand. They branded her. Unfortunately, uh, Da Vinci didn't leave any of the signature. We took a DNA sample. It'd be at least a week before we get it back from the lab. All right, thanks, Artie. There's no Da Vinci. I recognize the style. Do you remember Corey Eitzer? You put him away about three years ago, along with the rest of his cult? There was one woman who testified against him. She turned state's evidence. Her name was Ariel. Now, where the hell is she? Oh, Mike, that was three years ago. How the hell do I know? All right, we'll track her down. Skip, you got to find her. Now, take it easy, Mike. We're doing the best we can. And what did you see? <sighs> All right. The door was open when I got here. I walked in. And uh, I went in the bathroom, and there she was. She was lying in the bathroom. She was dead. And I saw this shadow, and I ran after it. Was it a man, a woman? I don't know. I, 
All right, so you chase the killer out the door, down the stairs, out into the alley. And I got off three shots. Well, we didn't find any traces of blood, so looks like you missed. Yeah, I missed all right. Hey, Mike, I'm sorry. I know how much Marianne meant to you. Yeah. Mike, I promise you this. We'll do everything we can to find her killer. No, Skip. This one's mine. This wasn't a random act of violence. It was a brand name murder, calculated and carefully timed. Marianne didn't have an enemy in the world, but I had a few. And my past had come back to haunt me. How's your teacher, Mike? Have you learned your lesson? Let's fast forward. How's your teacher, Mike? Have you learned your lesson? Is that a man or a woman? One thing for sure, it's a murderer. Again. How's your teacher, Mike? Have you learned your what lesson? How did this come in? Well, I stayed at work until 9, and then it had to come in sometime after that. What do you think, Mike? I think somebody's playing mind games. Corey Eitzer? Could be. I mean, that's his M.O. What kind of privileges does he have? Does he still have a phone and a TV? I'll call corrections. Any word on Ariel? Yes and no. And what's that mean? We don't know where she is. They put her in a witness protection. I'm working on it. And I just saw a rat in the basement the size of a minivan. OK, here's everything on Corey. Files, cold books. Think maybe copycat? Could be. Could be Corey himself. How could Corey kill Marianne from prison? Archer's followers are fanatics. He gets in touch with any one of them, they'll kill on command. That's why we got to get a hold of Ariel. I'm going to take this, see if the lab boys can run a voice scan. Everything can play with the tape speed, and at least we'll find out if it's a man or a woman. Very good. Well, check the Rolodex, see if we still have a phone number on Rick Dibner. Who's Rick Dibner? He literally wrote the book on Corey Eitzer. Made a bestseller. Yeah, if anybody knows this guy, it's him. Hey, Mike, your picture's in here. Figures. He just looks at the pictures. Hey, at least I'm reading the book. I did four or five interviews with Divner. So, Val, call him, make an appointment. I want to talk to him as soon as possible. OK, Mike. And uh, call Laddie Buck at the newsstand. Tell him I need some occult magazines. I'll pick them up later. What do you have for me? For you, there's a list on the desk. See how much you can get done by the end of the day. Where are you going? I've got a date with the devil. A devil I knew well. His name was Corey Eitzer. Right! All right! Mike. Mike, long time no see. You think about me as much as I think about you? Every time I step on a cockroach, a woman was murdered. Well, I got a lot of time on my hands, so uh, I probably think about you more. And I know you had something to do with it. You're paranoid, Mike. I'm in here. How could I kill someone? Especially someone as lovely as uh, Marianne. Marianne. Oh, poor Marianne. Three years ago, when you killed Carolyn Bates, there was no death penalty. That's all changed. They got it now. And believe me, pal, there is a needle with your name on it. Oh, you're scaring me, Mike. You're really scaring me. You better be scared. In fact, you better hope and pray the parole board never lets you out of here because you set one foot outside this place. You'll be ancient history before the other foot hits the ground. You have my word. <laughs> yeah, well, my parole hearing's in two years. And a lot could happen to you in two years, my camera. A lot. I'll make a note, cockroach. Yeah, don't threaten me. You can't threaten me. You can't threaten me. I have right. I have right. I... <laughs> With the stench of Corey in my nose, I needed a breath of fresh air. My pal, Laddie Buck. Coffin nails. My camera, my camera. How you doing, Laddie Buck? Selling, selling, selling. So, sell. Uh, Velda says you're smoking too much. You know, Velda's talking too much. 
All right, I'll tell you what, I'll take two packs instead of three. <laughs> hey, the public library's on 42nd Street. I know this girl. In your dreams. That's 555. Hey, Mike. Hey, Blue. How you doing? Oh, I've had better days. Yeah, tell me about it. My editor's been all over my ass. I didn't know you two were so close. Mm. I'm sorry about Marianne. That was a nice lady. A nice lady. Yeah, she was. You got any ideas who did it? I got some ideas. Uh, you'll get them, Mike. You'll get them, Mike. You got those magazines? Oh, yeah, Delta Call. Got them right here. Here, for you, Mike. I got them for you. Nice. Here. That's for you. Selling, selling. Hey, Mike. Rangers, Blackhawks. Who do you like? I like the Rangers. Great. I got a booth at Lou's right in front of the TV. You're buying. I'm buying? No thanks, pal. I got an IOU in my pocket with your name on it. Hey, Taxi. I'm strapped, and you need a couple cold ones. No, what I need to do is get myself uptown. See you later. Night, Mike. Night, Mike. Night, laddie. Night, laddie. Go. Go. Testing one, two, three. Hey, Junior, pipe down. I'm trying to watch a damn game. So watch it. It's talking. Who cares what they say? <laughs> What's the score? How the hell do I know? I can't hear a thing. Are you singing tonight? I'd have to be very drunk to sing karaoke. What can I get you, Nick? I'm fine. I just need to settle Mike's tab. Great. The rent's due tomorrow. What's Mike got you doing? I'm his errand boy. He cleans those? 93.50. Oh, good. So with Tip, that's what, 94 even? That's deeply humorous. Still seven minutes left. Excuse me. Uh, do you have any bottled water? I'm sorry, I just can't. That was a joke, right? All right. You here for karaoke? Um, I'd have to be drinking a lot more than water. <laughs> a woman with taste. I like that. Name's Nick. Trish. You shoot pool? Uh, I'm not very good at it. Oh, good. We'll play for money then. Oh, now that was a joke. That's right. <laughs> Man, I'd like to break her rack. At your age, whose stick would you use? You know you're illegitimate, don't you? I made my way uptown to an office I knew well near Columbia U. Rick Dipner had written the definitive book on Cory Eitzer, and I needed to pick his brain. Who is it? My camera. Hello, Mr. Hammer. Uh, Hi. I'm sorry, I'm here by myself. Oh, I understand. I had an appointment with Rick. Uh, Mr. Dipner's running a few minutes late. Please, come in. Oh, thanks. Oh, can I get you anything? Coffee, tea, glass of water? I'm fine, thank you. Mike. Sorry I'm late. Good to see you, Rick. Renee, could you get us a couple of coffees, please? Sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, I guess you know why I'm here. Unfortunately, I do. Marianne was branded. With an S on her back. And you think it's Corey Eitzer? It's his signature. But listen, you're the guy who wrote the book on him. What do you think? Mike, I don't want to get involved. Why not? Because I spent three years in the company of that psychopath, and it was a traumatic experience for me. Rick, I need your help. If this is Corey Eitzer, Marianne is not the only victim. Your name is going to be on that list, so is mine. Well, Corey's in prison. So are his followers. Well, not all of them. Ariel Hennessy? Ariel and a few new recruits. Oh, God, this is a nightmare. Listen, you know anybody who could have talked to Corey lately? Could he still have somebody working for him on the outside? He might. Squeaky Frome tried to kill President Ford, I think, five years after Manson was locked up. I'm sorry, Mike, but working on that book nearly destroyed me, and that's a road I don't want to go down again. Yeah. OK, I understand. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Without Rick's help, I was skating on thin ice. And this was no time to play games. All year he's been surprising us. <laughs> what do you think this is, a flop house? Rangers look like they're skating in cement. <laughs> hey, don't be so cocky. The game's not over yet. Where's Velda? Home. I told her I'd lock up. How come you're not going to lose? Uh, it's karaoke night. 
Can't hear the game. You should have sung a song. That would have cleared the place. Now get out of here. Out? Come on, Mike. I'm your pal. Please get out of here. I got work to do. All right. I know when I'm not wanted. Knowledge is power. I needed to clear my head and my desk. The envelope was scented, scented with the stench of death. Who next indeed? How's your teacher, Mike? Have you learned your lesson? The threat wasn't idle. Buddy Blue left my office for his place. Joe, what's in the elevator? But he wasn't alone. Joe, is that you? What? No lights either? Perfect. My friend Blue loved pumpkin pie, but not when he was the pumpkin. My friend Blue was alive, but barely. Someone had raised the stakes. How is he? 50-50. Oh, couldn't find anything missing at his place. I tell you, Skip, this was not a robbery. He had an A branded on his back. How did Corey do this? Well, I don't know that he did. One thing I do know, I want to put that sucker in solitary. I don't want him to have any phone privileges, no visitors, keep a man on his door 24 hours a day. Right. You got it. What's happening with Ariel? Well, we're still waiting on a judge's signature. You know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to crack the witness protection program. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm out of here. Hang in there, Blue. 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 Hey, Blue. Come on, pal. You can't quit on me. Listen, I thought you'd like to know that the Rangers lost in overtime. I owe you 50 bucks. Yeah. He's gonna be just fine. By the way, I hope that's fat free. <laughs> Rick Dibner had had a change of heart. Unfortunately, the killer didn't. I gotta go. You got it, Mike. When? It was under the door after I got back from lunch. This is really scary, Mike. That's exactly what he wants. Is Dibner here? He's in with Nick. Sorry I'm late. I was at the hospital. How's Blue? Not good. Listen, Mike, I'm really sorry about this. I wanted to help you the other night, but I just didn't want to get involved. No, I know how you feel, Rick. Listen, I would have been perfectly happy to spend the rest of my life without ever hearing the name Corey Eitzer again. Take a look at this. I think I can explain. Can you get the lights? Well, they're Aaron. When my book came out, I did a lot of personal appearances in colleges, big universities, occult conventions. And it's amazing how many people are still interested in the Corey case. Uh, can you get the blinds? Yeah. And the pentagram is the sign of the devil. It symbolizes all that is against God's will. Now, Corey Eitzer was your classic loner, tossed out of the military, drifted across West Texas into Southern California, busted for armed robbery in Barstow. Escaped to New York and got lost in the crowd. Now, as you know, Mike, Eitzer has a perverse charm, a Svengali-like attraction. That's Ariel. Yes, she was Eitzer's lover. And a lot of us thought the DA really blew it when he cut her a deal and let her walk. Well, if she didn't testify, Corey would have walked. Sometimes the system cuts a deal with the devil. You talked to Ariel? Well, I interviewed her for my book. I mean recently. 
I don't think I can give out this information. What are you talking about? If Eitzer's pulling strings from prison and killing people, I don't want that on my conscience. Come on, Rick. You want five dead people on your conscience? Now, where is she? The East Village. Give me a pen. I'll give you the address. With Dibner's help, I jumped the downtown local to pay a call on Corey's ex. Thanks. A Come witch on. without portfolio. Ariel Hennessy. What do you want? Now, is that any way to treat a customer? I don't see you buying nothing. You're a cop, right? I'm not buying your mouth, pal. I'm looking for Ariel. Who? You're too stupid to play stupid. Come on, I know she's here. Tell her my camera wants to see her. Hello, Mike. You OK? Yeah, he's wonderful. Hello, Ariel. Long time no see. I don't use that name anymore. Government gave me a new identity. Oh, what a shame. Your old one was so charming. It's a nice place you got here. You must clean up around Christmas. Yeah, would you like a tattoo? Drop your pants, baby. I beg your pardon. Well, I'd have to turn the other cheek. That's Christian theology. That's not your back, sweetheart. So how'd you find me? What do you want? I'm looking for a branding iron. And I see you just happen to have one. You. Mm, go. You go grease your Harley. Hey, take a load off. You got him jumping through hoops. Just the way you used to jump through Corey's. Yeah, well, my testimony put Eitzer away. For the last three years, I've been looking over my shoulder, and for the past 18 months, I've been on the run. Corey said he was going to kill me. Well, yeah, well, his word is gold on the street. A few days ago, a good friend of mine was killed. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. She had an S, burn on her backside. You've always been very handy with the branding iron, Ariel. Shut up. When I touch a nerve? You are really pissing me off. I see you've also taken up photography. What do you take? Adam's family portraits? I'm an artist, big deal. I like to take photos of my work. What have you been shooting lately? OK, brother, that's enough. You are not my brother, pal. <laughs> You've got an HMO, because you're going to need it. I'll be back. I left Ariel's to change clothes for Mary Ann's funeral, a simple, sad service attended by those she loved. On my way home, I stopped by for my nightly chat with Laddie Buck. But Laddie Buck wasn't talking. Move these people back. Laddie spent his life selling headlines. Now he was one. Why in the hell would anybody want to kill Laddie Buck? This wasn't about Laddie Buck. It's all part of their plan to get to me. That's why I got to get to them first. Skip, we got to get some pictures taken. So take them. I want you to have okay, one of your units pick up Ariel. Where? Avenue A and 2nd Street, East Village. Now, there's an occult shop. It's right in the middle of the block, but I don't remember the number. How'd you find her? Dibner. The book guy? Yeah. Get me dispatch. I'll be in my office. You call me just as soon as you pick her up. You understand? Right. This is Gleason. Where the hell's dispatch? Coffee break. Well, on a coffee break. Well, why don't we just shut the whole city down? I want him in my office the first thing in the morning. <sighs> Someone get me a coffee? Laddie Buck's brand was a T. Which means two more people are going to die. Well, what makes you think he's going to stop at victim number five, which he hopes is going to be me? Well, that's what he did last time, Mike. He killed five people spelling out Satan, then he stopped. No, he didn't stop. I stopped him. I hadn't thought of that. Maybe he plans on killing more. Maybe. And maybe Corey's not the killer. A copycat? Could be. It's very possible, Mike. These types of murders attract, well, I guess the only word for it is groupies. People who become obsessed to the point where they identify so strongly with the killer that they become the killer themselves. Obsessions are very powerful. I remember Mark David Chapman was obsessed with John Lennon. I studied the Lennon murder and Hinckley after he shot Reagan. There's someone out there obsessed with Corey who studied him. Somebody who read your book. Well, my book and maybe 50 others. 
Yeah, Mike. I think it's very possible we're dealing with a copycat. Mike, I've got Skip Gleason on the line. I'll put him through. Well, I can tell you this, whether it's Corey or a Corey clone, tonight could be fatal for somebody. Eitzer killed Carolyn Bates three years ago today. Halloween. Right. Yes, yeah, Skip. On my way. Sorry, Rick, I gotta meet Gleason. Listen, if you can think of anything else that's gonna help, call Velda. I'll be in touch. I met Skip at Ariel's, but Ariel had already skipped. How the hell did she get out of here without one of your guys seeing her? There's a basement. It connects with the shop next door. Damn it! We'll find her, Mike. If she's lucky, we'll find her. More devil crap. What is it? A receipt from Laddie Buck's newsstand. It ties Ariel to Laddie Buck. It's pretty convenient, don't you think? It's too convenient. I can tell you this. Ariel didn't do it. What's the matter, Nick? Well, I'm pissed off at Mike. He's got me running errands, and we're in the middle of a murder investigation. Why doesn't he let you help? Well, because he's obsessed. You know, I busted this guy three years ago named Corey Eitzer, and now all of a sudden all his friends are getting killed. I think it's something personal between he and Corey. Well, don't you take it personally, OK? Do you want to go to a Halloween party with me tonight? I hate Halloween parties. I love Halloween parties. Did I say I hate Halloween parties? Because I lied. All Hallows' Eve, a green light for some to indulge in perverse passions, and for others to indulge in their passion for murder. the office of Mike Hammer, private investigator. At the sound of the gunshot, please leave your message. I told her to change that. Hey, Mike, it's Nick. We're at Lou's, and I got my beeper, so if you need me, page me. Come on, Nick. Let's dance. See you later. Hey, Mike Hammer. Mike Hammer. Checked your mail lately? Mail lately? Mail lately? This was the first time I ever checked the mail and hoped I'd only find bills. But this deadly invoice demanded a price I was unwilling to pay. Nick and Velda. The message was loud and clear. Now I wanted to shoot the messenger. I thought you only liked tricks, cockroach. You're a sick man, Hammer. You know what? You should be in here. I mean, how many men, hmm? How many men have you killed in your life? And who are you to judge anyone, hmm? Hmm? Who are you to judge me? You're just a victim, right? A poor, misunderstood psychopath. Yeah, well, you understand this. You're a dead man, Mike Hammer. I'm gonna make sure you die. And when you're dead, I'm gonna shampoo my hair with your blood. Well, don't forget to rinse, pal. No, it's my night, Mike. The high holy day. So you better sleep with the light on. Guess what, Corey? We've got Ariel. You what? You heard me. something. What? We know you didn't kill Marianne or Laddie Buck, but we know you know who did. Who was it? <sighs> Somebody's playing a joke. 
Somebody's stealing my act, and that makes me very angry. I mean, these leeches are making money off me with their movies and their books, and now murders, my murders. Who was it, Corey? I'm not telling you nothing. And someday I'm gonna walk out of here, and then I'm gonna settle some scores. I'm gonna rebuild my church on consecrated soil, a temple to Satan, a shrine to me, and nobody's gonna stop me, not the cops, not the CIFNA, not nobody. Nobody, All right, nobody, get him out of nobody, here. nobody. You got that, Mike? No, Mike, you got that? You and me, pal. You and me. As midnight approached, the costume bash at Lou's was in full swing. While Skip and I headed cross town, Nick and Belle departed, okay, unaware that some of the ghosts and goblins were real. Hey, Lou, you seen Trish? How should I know, man? It's a costume party. Can I get a beer? Yeah, coming right up. What are you supposed to be? I'm supposed to be getting lucky, but I can't find my date. Um, what, are you waiting for a school bus? I'm not gonna meet anybody with Artie, the one-man party, breathing down my neck. How'd you shake your babysitter? The subway. Change trains at Times Square. It'll be 450, Nick. Now I know why you're wearing a pirate outfit. There she is. And I thought you stood me up. What, are you kidding? It's awfully crowded in here. You want to split? Your clad or mine. Would you expect to see a cat? It's Halloween, Mike. Oh, yeah. What will the cat have? A glass of milk? I don't drink milk. Give me a shot of vodka. Vodka? Yeah. I thought you were vegetarian. I am. That's why I don't drink milk. I'll have what she's having. This is pure potato. Really? Mm -hmm. Happy Halloween. And Merry Christmas. Hey, Mike! You gotta go. Mm, yeah. Have you seen Nick? Oh, I saw him a minute ago. Maybe he left with that girl. What girl? I don't know. She said her name was Trish. She was dressed like an angel. All right, I want you out of here. Recess is over. Why? I'll explain later. How about your office? It's a good idea. Take Velda up to Hammer's office. Keep her there. Mike, what is wrong? Just do it. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. I can walk. Give me my sucker. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Did you know that vodka is made from pure potato? No. Maya told me. How do they get it in the bottle? By Nick. You know, I'm a big girl. I don't need a chaperone. Maybe not, lady, but I need my job. Detective Gleason told me to stick with you. Where you go, I go. May I? Any luck? No, I can't find Nick anywhere. Well, keep looking. I have to get something from the office. Right. I was about to engage in a pitched battle with the devil, but this time the devil threw out the first pitch. Velda? Velda and Nick were missing, and Detective Ushery was a bloody bale of hay. The trail led to one place, the consecrated ground on which Corey threatened to rebuild his church. Heidzer's old playpen in Astoria, Queens. The address was in a dusty file. I knew I shouldn't have had that last tequila. 
What the hell? That's exactly where you are. Where's Trish? In the name of Lucifer and of his prophet, Cory Eitzer, I offer you this sacrifice to the Prince of Darkness. Come on now. Okay, wait a minute. I've heard of a bloodbath, but this is a little ridiculous. Trish! I'm right here, Nick. Oh, Jesus. Watch your language. You're one sick chick, you know that? I thought you liked to have fun, Nick. We're gonna have fun tonight. Skin to skin. You're wearing protection. Mike. Would you cut yourself shaving? Have one of your gargoyles untie him. You okay, kid? Now I am. Where's Velda? I don't know. Corey said that you would come. When did you talk to Corey? I didn't talk to him. He left me a message this morning. That's impossible, sweetheart. Corey's been out of commission for the last 24 hours. What are you talking about? Somebody wanted you to think it was Corey, but it wasn't him. Sorry we took so long. Tunnel traffic was murder. Take over, Skip. I'm out of here. Where are you going? Trick or treating. What the hell? What happened to you, kid? Well, the girl of my dreams turned out to be a nightmare. The cliché is true enough. You can't judge the book by its cover. But sometimes you can judge the author of the book by his cover. Rick Dibner, Corey's alter ego, had an ego of his own. Drop the gun. Slowly. Put it on the desk. Where's Belda? I wasn't supposed to end like this, Mike. No, you were hoping I'd fall into the trap you set with Corey's girls. Yes, I was. But I know you almost as well as I know Corey, so I decided to take Velda as an insurance policy. I should have figured you out sooner, Rick. It's quite a compliment coming from you. Book sales been going a little slow lately, huh? So you figured you'd write a sequel. But you can't have a sequel without murder. So you killed poor Mary Ann, figuring they'd blame it on Corey Eitzer and you'd be back on the bestseller list. Then you tried to kill Blue. But unfortunately for you, he lived. He's a lot tougher than he looks. That was a mistake, Rick. Corey always finished the job. I won't repeat that mistake with you. And then you killed poor Laddie Buck, whose only crime was that he knew me. Oh, and then you nailed Detective Ushery and grabbed Velda. And then you would have had Corey's girls kill Nick. That would have made for a most interesting chapter. But you screwed up. You take nice pictures, Rick. Too bad your camera's broken. A slight imperfection in the lens that leaves a mark on every picture it takes. It's very sloppy, Rick. Too bad you're not going to be able to write it yourself. It really is a hell of a story. You spent so much time with Corey, you actually became Corey, didn't you, Rick? You became a killer yourself. But you didn't do it for the thrill. You did it for the cash. Let's go. The branding iron was in the fire, and time had run out. At least Velda was still alive. You OK? Her? Over there. Get rid of the trench coat. Put your hands up. Here. Here. Get your hands up on the railing. Let's go. Let her go, Didner. It's me you want, not her. Let her go. Corey's a terrific character. The public is very hungry for a new adventure. And I'm gonna give it to them. You know, Rick, you've made me very upset. In fact, you've really got me steamed. <laughs> Ah! 
Would you like to buy a vowel? Let's go. Over here. Go an ambulance. Mike, why did you have to brand the guy? The devil made me do it. Looks to me like a simple case of mad cow disease. Call the morgue. You got it. Somebody get me a coffee? Halloween was over, but I felt like some candy. 80 proof candy. We're closed. What, the health department finally come in here? Come on, how about an eye opener? Yeah, why not? I've already had three. <laughs> My head's killing me. How's Blue? Better. It's gonna make it. Good, that's good news. Yeah, it is. I wish I could say the same for poor Laddie Buck and Marianne. But enough of that. Let's have some music. You got it, Mike. So, Nick, did you hit on any witches on the way to work today? Now, how was I supposed to know that Trish was such a lunatic? She hit on you, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's dance. Halloween. A night when pumpkins are carved, costumes are prepared, and little goblins toss in their beds, restless with the sweet anticipation of cavities to come. A night when you could meet the ghoul of your dream. Trick or treat. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.